Welcome to Fort Cochin in Kerala. My new friends. If you come here looking for an actual fort, you're going to be a bit disappointed because there isn't one. The whole area is known as Fort Cochin. This was where the Europeans landed and made it their base. Yeah, there were a few fortresses or some sort of fortifications, but there's no massive castle. There's just a huge amount of beautiful colonial history. So uh, let's kick off. There's so much history in Kochi, you almost don't know where to start. But Mr. De Gama, or Vasco, as he was better known to his friends, makes it much easier for us. So let's kick off in Vasco de Gama Square. We are coming for say everybody like this machine, so I talk, 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 I know it's your language. Yeah, we, 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 see the garden. First time put in one design. I pray for that though. I can try. Yeah, you can try. Ten minutes, no problem. I have too much time. <laughs> See. Lagar Murkunda ko. Okay. Okay, okay. Take two finger here. Slowly down. That's it. Okay, very good. Like you just press it coming out. Yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly. Not that much fast. Slowly. That's it. Behind me is another fantastic example of Portuguese architecture. These guys left their mark all over Fort Cochin and the Kerala coast in the shape of Catholic churches. Now, when Vasco da Gama left Portugal in 1497, it was at the time the longest journey ever made by sea by a European. It took him two years to get here and back again. And he got here six years after Christopher Columbus made his epic journey west to the Caribbean. Traders have been coming to these shores for a good 600 years or more. Typically, we associate it with West Europeans. It was the Portuguese to begin with, then in came the Dutch, then the British, but everybody wanted to muscle in on the action. Behind me, you can see the Chinese fishing nets. Let's go and take a closer look. is famed for its beautiful white beaches and this clearly isn't one of them but that might be because it's actually a working fishing port as you'll see behind me.
behind those thick walls you can get a glimpse into what it must have been like in the colonial era, hundred, maybe even two hundred years ago. Those who were more equal than others. Still looks impressive to this day, although there wouldn't have been any air conditioning. This is what Kerala is all about. This is why Europeans came here. It's all about the spice of life. Mostly pepper, cinnamon. A lot of people got very rich. Within the spice trade, there were a lot who died trying, didn't actually even make it this far. But let's go and have a closer look at the actual spices. This, I think, is nutmeg. Not quite sure what it's used for. Peas porridge or something, but... Uh, it's got a reasonable smell to it. The spice market part of Fort Cochin is also known as Jew Town, probably because lots of Jews used to live here. Now there are very few left here today, they've mostly emigrated, but there are many symbols left from days gone by. India's definitely progressing. Look at this, hassle-free shopping. So I'm just showing, this is how much soft is this, and it's through the ring. That's the like uh, softness just of the pashmina. Now you can see it's through oh, wow. easily. You can can I try? It. Yes. Hey, hey, look at this. Yes. So this proves it's real, yes. but it's not Stuck made in, in China anywhere. or anything. No, it's a pure Kashmir. Oh, look at that. Fits through a ring. It's Quality. impossible like a smaller than this ring. There we are. If it is. Impressive. Yes. So this is our wool. 100% pure Kashmir, we call it this. And it's for the men. For, for men. men? Yes, for men. It's very really soft. So what do I do? Put it on my head or? It's not like you can put like this. So we have one style like this. Wow. So it's a like a universal style. So you can wear like this. Yeah. And if it is probably like you're wearing a jacket or something. So then you can try like this way. Like not tight. Like this way. And it will be loud. Good. Very good. And you can see this. This is now you can see. Okay. Here. But isn't it a bit hot for this in Kerala? But here it's really hot. But back home you need these off things. Well. Wow. You can see. You can and wear I thought a jacket. You'd... I and thought this, you put it in your head, no? And this you massage your neck. Massage your neck, wow. Yes. That's not a bad idea. Free massage, you okay. You can put the leg back on the neck and you can see. Excellent. See this. Wow. And free when you eat in your room. And it sends you to sleep, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Just about every religion under the sun is represented in India. Kerala is no exception. This is a giant temple, J-A-I-N, not giant. It's actually not that big, but this is one of the slightly more bizarre religions. Very, very strict, extremely demanding, but uh, we'll have a quick look. Let's see if we can have a look around.
for a moment it might be closed on a Sunday, but no, we got in. We're the only ones here. I couldn't get into the actual temple, presumably because I'm not giant, and it's a religion I confess I don't know a huge amount about, but uh, it's very pretty. It's certainly a bit different. Anyway, on to the next hole. <laughs> I thought I'd left the ex-Soviet Union countries, but look what I've stumbled across. It's a hammer and sickle. Now, I've been told by the locals that the Communist Party are the ones in power in Kerala. That was something I wasn't expecting. Oh, well, that's enough walking for today. Luckily, there's never a tuk-tuk too far away. Let's jump into this one. Not that one. The Portuguese were into their Catholicism and they left churches everywhere they went as their main mark. And this is the very first one built in India back at the beginning of the 1500s. Fantastic. This has been Luke Jones the other way. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>